Thank you very much. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me to discuss this very interesting paper. Uh, I was lucky enough to see the paper two weeks ago, and so that was a great, um, a great, uh, you know, red flag for me to start thinking about the issues and to to try to understand it better. I think uh, Sony made a great job in presenting the paper, but. Um, my presentation uh, is going to focus mostly on this investment problem because it's something that both in the presentations as well as in the paper they just pass by and I think it's very important because it's at the core of the analysis. Okay, So I spend a fair amount of time trying to understand what this investment problem is and why, how can we use it to, to conduct the analysis that the authors want to conduct. So uh, again just to frame the, the issues uh, with the Authors try to understand is what is intangible capital and how, uh, you know, what's the contribution of intangible capital to the value of uh, of the companies, uh, and and the idea that they have they, they try to implement is to use firm level data on IT employment, uh, not not on investment, not on capital, but on employment, um, and information on the market value of the companies to compute the elasticity of market value with respect to IT employment, or you know, in the model IT investment. And then um, once they have that, they compute the value of IT, of, of IT um, the market value of IT capital, um, uh, including the intangible. And, and then they decompose that intangible market value into price and quantities, okay? That's basically how I see the exercise. Um, and so I want to, I want to go back to the investment problem, okay? So I apologize for those of you that think about, you know, the neoclassical investment model every day. Uh, it's not my case, so, you know, I spent a little bit of time deriving this, 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 uh, the solution to this model, okay? So here we have a representative company uh, that is going to maximize the present discounted value of future profits. So here, profits are linear in capital, okay? You may be, you may be um, surprised by that, you know, there are diminishing returns to capital. Well. Uh, this is what you get once you factor in the fact that you adjust labor, okay? So once you, if you, there's a, a step zero that I haven't shown you, which is that, you know, you choose capital and labor, you take the wage rate as, as given, once you plug in that first other condition, profits are linear in capital, okay? Um, and then you have this adjustment cost. This adjustment cost is a, basically a convex, a quadratic adjustment cost a, in the amount of investment that you make at each time tau, okay? So here the notation tau is the running time, t is the beginning of time. And there is a lot of motion for capital and an initial given level of capital, okay? So far, so good. So then the first other condition with respect to investment, uh, it's what Sony showed you. It says, look, give me the shadow value of a unit of, um, of capital and that shadow value is going to have two components. One is the value of tangible capital, which is the cost of, the cost of, of buying the machine, okay? It's one. Um, and the other is the intangible value, which is uh, the cost of installing the machine. And that intangible value is uh, driven by this adjustment cost, uh, chi, and is driven by how much investment I'm making. If I make a lot of investment, the adjustment cost will be higher, and the marginal value of intangible capital will be higher. And that will raise Q, okay? So that's, that equation is kind of nice because you can isolate I from here. So you can, for, for given Q, for given K, you can isolate I and that gives you the investment function. That gives you how much investment you're going to be making, okay? And so when Q is higher, I'm going to invest more, okay? Um, so, so far, so good. Okay, so then what the author says, okay, what's the connection between Q and I and the market value of the company, okay? And that's very easy. So the value of the company is equal to the amount of, um, of capital I have times the shadow value of capital, times Q, okay? So that's, that's the, the relationship that they, they have in mind. And, and this is where they stop theory-wise, okay? But there is a second order condition which I think is very important. It's the first order condition that helps us think about what's Q, okay? So what I've shown you here is the optimal investment equation, okay? So for a given Q, how much am I going to invest, okay? But I, I haven't told you what is Q. Q is, is treated as a parameter. But Q is not a parameter, it's an endogenous variable. It's very important to understand what is Q because Q is at the center of the analysis. So fortunately, the model can tell us what is Q. 
you take the first order condition with respect to capital, what you get is an expression that pins down the value of Q. It's this recursive equation that tells you that Q, you know, if you iterate it forward, you know, you can express it in this way. So Q is equal to the present discounted value of future productivities of capital and the marginal reductions in the adjustment cost from having more capital today. Okay? So basically, when I invest today, I will have more capital today and in the future that will reduce future adjustment cost. That's something that I'm pricing. I'm also pricing future productivity. Very importantly, how I'm discounting this is going to affect the value of Q. It's suddenly, my company discounts the future more heavily, the stochastic discount factor will decline and Q will decline. Okay? If suddenly my company, if suddenly the market or my sector or my, my region discounts the future less heavily, then the market value of, of, of investment will increase. Okay? Note that, uh, and this is relevant for, for something that Sonny alluded to, that many of these factors are going to be common to other investment decisions. Okay? So in particular, like the discount rate that the company applies probably is very similar across different investment, investment objects. Okay? Uh, productivity of capital would be also highly correlated. These investments typically are complementary. Uh, if I have good management, maybe uh, um, our, you know, my, 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 my engineers have lots of great ideas, uh, then, and, and I launch many products, then it's worthwhile investing in AI and, and God knows why. If I have a terrible you know, design team, then it's not worthwhile making all these investments because the company is not that great anyway. Okay. Um, okay. So, what do the authors do with this machinery? Okay, so this is the model, and now they take this model and they bring it to the data. How do they bring it to the data? How do they utilize it? Well, the first thing they do is they regress the value of the company, the market value of the company on IT investment proxied by this uh, number of IT workers, okay, from LinkedIn. Um, and they, they, they run this regression, I, I will come back to this, they run this regression using rolling windows, okay? So basically, it's almost like every four years, they, they estimate, it's almost like as, as if they had like a one point estimate for this elasticity, for this coefficient, sorry, it's not an elasticity, for this coefficient, every period, okay? It, the first time I saw that, I said, oh, what, what, what are they doing? Like, why, why do they want to run values on investment? Like, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, pricing, the pricing equation the pricing equation is an equation where you value the capital, not the investment. So that's like, you know, in a, in a, if you just take this equation, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, capital is fixed. The value of capital goes up, goes down, and that's going to be show up in the, in the stock market. However, this is the beauty of the model. The model proved me wrong, okay? So the model justified the regression. Why? Because if you go back to the investment equation I showed you before, sorry, you go back to this investment equation, you can relate investment to capital, okay? You can take this equation, you plug it back, and you get basically a relationship between investment today and the value of uh, the market value of the company today, which is exactly is, 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 is the vindication of your regression, okay? Um, now, it's kind of interesting. This object is not Q anymore. This object is, is, is uh, Q or Q minus one times the adjustment cost, okay? So it's a different object, but it's a, you know, it, this is theory de derived, okay? Okay, then they take this regression, they run it, and they, um, they have these coefficients, and they compute the market value of uh, IT, okay? Uh, this is something that we don't see in the data. It's something that they have computed. They take the LinkedIn IT workers, these coefficients, and they, they get that. And then, I will need an extra minute. <laughs> and then they are going to use uh, this first order condition uh, to decompose uh, this market value into K and Q, okay? So uh, that's very straightforward. You just need to uh, plug in the values. You have these Vs, you have the Ks, you, you fix a number for, for chi and for delta, and you are done, okay? And once you have the Ks, you can compute the Qs, okay? So this is what they do. Okay, so what are my, my reactions? So I think this is very nice, very interesting. They use nice theory to, to, to do this exercise. However, I see some potential identification problems, okay? In addition to the one that Sony discussed, the, described, which I, I don't think is trivial, but I think there is a bigger problem, which is that 
this regression makes sense if you, if I was exogenous, okay? If I is exogenous, you have exogenous variation in I, then you can run this regression, identify the true beta, okay? The problem is that I is not exogenous. I just proven you that I is endogenous, okay? In particular, there are things that are going to affect B that are also going to drive I. And so when you run this regression, part of the coefficient that you're identifying is not the effect of exogenous loop change in I and seeing how that affects the market value. Part of the coefficient is the effect of changing B and I responding to that, okay? Because the, f the, 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 the drivers of B are the same as the drivers of Q, and the drivers of Q are also affecting I, okay? So that's, a, I think, a significant econometric problem of the exercise. I'm not an econometrician, but, you know, same. Then there are a couple of other things that I wanted to bring in. Uh, one, it's something that I haven't had time to think about, but I think it's important, uh, uh, or potentially important, which has to do with the fact that they run these regressions. They run these regressions um, in levels, not in log levels. And so, um, and, and the reason is that they have lots of zeros on, the, on, 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 on IT. They are companies that don't invest in IT. And, and they don't want to throw those companies away, and so the solution is to run, if I understand it correctly, they run it in levels. But then the, the, the problem of running things in levels is that then, like, you know, the, the, the little details matter a lot, like the units, for, for example, like, or the, or the, or the, the specifications, uh, the, 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 the coefficients that you use. And so they have shown some robustness checks, but I think that uh, the issues here are a bit, a bit more subtle than in a standard setting where you just run logs in logs and then you forget about the units, you forget about, like, you know, the, 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 um, the constants that, that go there because they disappear from the analysis, it's all, it's all a bit like, you know, we, you, you have to be more careful when you run things in levels. The final point I want to raise now that I'm over time, it's about, it's a broader issue which I'm still struggling with, which is what is intangible capital, okay? So um, in this model, if you take it literally, intangible has to do with adjustment costs. Uh, you put some capital in place and the intangible component is the cost of adjusting capital. What if, to implement these technologies, physical capital was not so important, okay? What if it was just, you know, one input that you put in place, but in reality, there are all sorts of other investments that are much more important than capital. Uh, imagine that some of these technologies don't require any capital at all. You just have to, you know, implement a technology that is disembodied, okay? Then, uh, there would be, in this model, there would be no, no intangible, no intangible. Uh, but in reality, those investments, uh, investments not in physical capital, but investments in the sense that you have to devote resources, would increase the value of the company, okay? And so I think that uh, that's a, 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 a slightly different way to think about uh, uh, complementary values uh, in, in, in market values to the companies, to the physical capital. And this is how, you know, we have thought, for example, about the, 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 the price of adopting new technologies in which you create a value for the company by implementing the technology that is orthogonal to the market value of physical capital. It's unrelated to the physical capital because the implementation per se uh, is not necessarily related to how many units of the machine you are going to buy. It's a sunk cost that you have to incur. You develop that, that, that uh, ability to use a new technology. That increases the market value. It's intangible because it's not associated to physical capital. Um, and so I'm not sure how that view connects uh, to, the, to this adjustment cost view. Um, maybe they are very connected, maybe not. It's just food for thought, okay? Thank you.